Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. We are back again with more opportunities. And today particularly, we're looking at the MasterCard Foundation Scholarship at the University of Edinburgh in the UK. Yes, I'm happy to announce that the MasterCard Scholarship at Edinburgh is back, bigger and better. So for those who know the MasterCard brand, it's usually a fully funded scholarship. And I must say for students or applicants coming from the African continent. This particular scholarship opened on the 15th of December and I think closes in January, but very soon we'll look at the particular deadlines together. And there are also two alternatives. You have the online alternatives, those who wish to study for courses online and those who wish to study on campus. The, the requirements are similar, but there might be some tweaks here and there. So pay attention for the requirements for those applying for online and those for um, on campus. And you can also read the FAQ section to see whether you can apply for both or contact them directly on that. So apart from talking about the scholarship, I'll also show you here how to write the scholarship essays. So there are about five essays and I've written a number of bullet points here, which I will talk you through eventually in the course of this video. So do not worry, I've got you through and through. When it comes to scholarship essay writing, there's hardly anyone out there who does it better. <laughs> so let's continue. So it is the MasterCard scholarship and let's check the online and then we'll check the on campus opportunities. So for the online, there are both uh, master's and diploma opportunities. So those who want to study for a master's, it takes about three years for the online course. And for the diploma it takes, I think, two years. You can see the um, duration here. And of course, it's funded whether the master's or the um, diploma. And these are the courses eligible can see the eligible courses here, and of course the eligibility criteria as well. So let's check if it's similar for the on-campus courses. So as you can see quickly, let me just make this bolder. Uh, it's a full scholarship, <laughs> just to bring that to your attention once again. A full scholarship, you can see here covering tuition fees, accommodation, travel, living cost stipend. So the Pro the program contains everything or covers everything through and through. You wouldn't need to move a financial muscle if you get the scholarship. I should rephrase that. You wouldn't need to move a financial muscle when you get the scholarship. So you just come with your bags and of course your brain. So apart from this, you also get like a transformational training program. And of course you get to join the fantastic MasterCard student and alumni body. So these are the eligible courses. You can see African and international development, food security, sustainable energy systems, entrepreneurship and innovation, and data, inequality, and society. So let's read the eligibility criteria together. For you to be eligible, of course, you have to qualify for one of these courses that you intend to apply for. So you go to the course page, you know, like this is African development or African and international development and check the applications requirements. So to be qualified for the scholarship, you also need to be qualified for one of the eligible courses. So you can go to the applications requirements here and check. You can see here that it requires a 2-1 or international equivalent. So you can see that and that's quite um, clear. So check for the other courses. And of course, you should, we've seen that here already, 2-1. Um, you should have um, academic qualification that could give you admission into that course you've selected. So you should have graduated by December 2022 and have your certificate and transcript in hand. So a number of people might ask, oh, I'm a final year student, I'm running off my study, um, do I still apply? They want you to have your certificate in hand. So when you're applying, you're showing your certificate, you're showing your transcript, not saying, oh, I'm still writing my exams or my certificates will come out sometime next year. So they want you to have these things in hand already and to show us proof while you're applying. Mm -hmm. Of course, as I said, it's also open for 
precisely open for those coming from the African continent. And you have to demonstrate financial need that on your own, you're unable to fund this your overseas studies. So it's quite expensive, I must say, to study in the UK as an international student. You're paying close to 30 or even more, 30,000 or more. When you, that's pounds, by the way. So that's a lot of money. And um, of course, many, I think many of you would fall under this category of those who cannot fund it on their own. And of course, they also like um, application from minorities or people from um, um, minority backgrounds, people like um, like women who are underrepresented refugees. You ne don't necessarily have to be a woman to apply, of course. But this is like an added advantage if you can make your case that, oh, you're a woman and you're underrepresented in this particular field, or you're a refugee or from a minority background, or the disability could also use that to like gain their leverage as well. Track record of leadership and um, community service, that's also important. And they say something about applicants should not have previously completed a postgraduate degree. So if you have a master's already, unfortunately, you cannot apply for this and should not be enrolled at a separate university while on this scholarship. So you should not be at Edinburgh and then doing something else in your home country. And there's also an age limit that applicants must be 35 or younger on the 1st of September 2023. So 35 or younger when you're about to begin the course. So how do you apply for the scholarship? Of course, it's reiterating this thing that you must be academically qualified for admission at Edinburgh. But they prefer that you first apply for the scholarship before then you are at, um, you're invited, I believe, to apply to the university. So first apply for the scholarship. If it goes through, if it seems like going through, then you can ask, when do I apply for the university admission itself? So prioritize the scholarship at um, application and then later on sometime next year you can apply for the scholarship so as i said the scholarship opened 15th of december and closes on the 27th there's a an FA grief section here where you can get more info and there's an information session coming on on the 11th and 16th of january you can always register for this online where you can ask your questions get more info about the scholarship and you know Information is key, information is power. So use it to your advantage. Try to um, register for the information, information session so you get all the details that you need. Of course, when you're ready, just click on this button and it takes you to the application form. You just log in here or register rather, since you do not have an account before. Register, put in your details and then we go to the, we go to the essays. So there's also a timeline here, of course, of what is occurring when and things like that. So the application stage, as we said, 15th of December, online form um, for both online and campus um, application. And then application for online master's program, you can see here, postgraduate degrees alone. Yes, we've got all that information as well. Um, there is no competitive advantage for applying for the scholarship early. Okay, that's good to know. We've seen the courses available, both for online and on campus, um, other things here. But I want to just take your attention to the essays. The essays, so there are like um, five of them. Here it is said 50 to um, 250 words. So probably on the application form, it becomes clear whether these... Um, word limit is for per question or the entire questions. If you ask me, I think it's for per question because these are lots of questions that 250 words cannot answer um, together. But if 250 is allocated to each question, then it makes a lot of sense. But in the application form, which um, I hinted on here, I think it will become clear whether it's 250 for each question or for... Um, them together but well, i'm betting on the first anyway so talking about the questions of course there are other kinds of info here i think you can read on your own like there's an interview stage and things like that and usually the interview is also about most times about the the um what do they call it often about the the documents you submitted before and the claims you made in your essay so if you could just revise that a little bit more and um, it would help you as well and when to get references and things like that. So there you go. Let's go to the essays quickly because this is like a, 
one of the make or breaks when it comes to this scholarship. So look at the pointers quickly and um, inspire your thoughts. So for the first question, reflecting on your life so far, tell us how you meet the key selection criteria for the scholars program. You should include information on your academic achievements and barriers to education you have faced. We are particularly welcoming applications from those who identify as women, refugees, and blah, 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 disabilities, and the rest of them. If you identify as any of these categories, please reflect on, reflect this in your answer with as much details as you're comfortable sharing. Okay. So to answer this question, I would say, begin by just follow the prompts. They say something about your academic achievements, barriers to education, and then if you're like from a minority background. So begin by your academic qualifications, the prizes you've won. Where did you study? You studied at Sosa University. You did this course. You graduated with this degree. You also had this prize in this or prize in that. That's a good beginning. Then state something quickly about your work experience, professional experience, if you've gathered any. So this is where you work. This is what you do. And also try to always show the, try to always show the community orientation, not just the individual orientation. Like you work for a media firm where you try to disseminate um, truthful information and fight fake news and make sure you bring information to the fingertips of the people because you believe if individuals have good information, they can use it as um, a tool to ask for government accountability or something like that. So um, volunteer background, um, if you're into volunteer activities, what did you do and things like that. So just briefly, then financial hardship. Financial hardship particularly should be directed towards your previous studies. So how did you fund your previous studies? Remember they said something about academic barriers. So usually um, a number of people might have gone through, a number of people might have gone through hell paying for their school fees while doing their undergrad or paying for their lab work or, you know, um, paying for their up upkeep in general as students. And probably they had to secure loans or part-time jobs or help from relatives churches, communities. So tell us about the financial hardships you went through as a student, how your parents had to like pay for your fees with over maybe over 50% of their monthly income, and which was a very um, big, left a very big gap in your family um, income or your family pocket. So things like that show struggle. That if you're a minority, like a woman, also just, do not just say you're a woman, but show how probably women in your community often do not go to school or even if they go to school, they do not um, have this opportunity to like further their education or show how women in your field are not well represented or how they are underrepresented. And of course, show if you belong to other minority groups, like maybe you're orphaned, a refugee community or displaced or with your disability as well and show how these have impacted your life, impacted your education and impacted your professional career. So let's move to the second question, shall we? We want to learn about your track record as a, as a transformative leader. Tell us about one current idea or project that you're working on, which clearly demonstrates this situation. So here you can use the STAR method or the STAR-L method. The STAR method is the situation tax, action, result, and the L there is learning. What did you learn? So here you give concrete leadership or uh, volunteer experiences and make sure it should be people, community oriented. For instance, you can say you spearheaded the fundraising of a youth sports center in your community. So the situation is that the former youth sports center was in a dilapidated state. So you have like this football court, this volleyball court and basketball court that are very difficult to use because the facilities were no longer good. The volleyball net was no longer there, the balls and everything. And you know the value of um, sports in first good health and fitness and in uniting people in conflict resolution, you know, in keeping youth busy and preventing them from being nuisance in the community in the first place. So sports played a very integral role in your community. But unfortunately, the sports facilities um, uh, became dilapidated and most people were not able to use them. So the tax is now to raise funds, look for how to address this dilapidation, how to raise funds to 
you know, renovate the youth sports center and bring back these activities, um, get boys and girls fit, you know, help them organize community matches and things like that and teach them teamwork and, you know, brotherliness and sisterliness through sports. So what action did you take? You took actions by probably gathering a team to raise funds through appealing to local businesses, local churches, local mocks, local schools, um, local individuals, you know, like rich mommies and daddies in the society. So going to them, giving them appeal letters and telling them to donate, selling your vision to them about how you intend to revamp the sports center. So results, how much did you get for the donation? Um, how much innovation were you able to do? Um, how did you bring back people to the sports center and things like that? Learning. So what do you learn in the process? You might say you learned perseverance, you learned teamwork, you learned not to give up early. You learn to persist because a number of people um, from the first visit wouldn't even want to listen to you. But by the time you persist, show them pictures, you know, appeal to them a little bit more. You see persistence space and at the end of the day, they contributed towards the project. So persistence, working with the team, there's like accountability as well, like publishing the results of the amount you got and um, ensuring transparency. So as I said, a concrete leadership volunteer experience. Tell them the place, the time where it occurred, as if they're going to verify it. It's very important. And make sure it's community people oriented. Let's go to the third question. We aim to award the, the MasterCard Foundation scholarships to individuals who will benefit most from the opportunity. I would, being a Master, MasterCard Foundation scholar, support your developments personally and professionally. Uh, you could start by saying how this will help uh, my education and professional career by sponsoring my studies, that you've always wanted to sponsor your studies and um, your goal is to become so-so-so and a master's degree would, would um, make that plan come to a tr um, fruition. You've always dreamt about this or you want to become a professional in a particular company, but you do not have a master's and you do not have the financial capacity to pursue this. So the MasterCard Foundation will help you to further this professional goal of yours in the first place. And of course, talk about the international exposure because you'll be studying at Edinburgh, University of Edinburgh, one of the top universities in the UK. We talk about the international exposure this will give you and how this will also help your professional and your personal life. That your international exposure particularly will help your personal life because now you traveling is part of education, right? You get to meet new people, new cultures, you know, make new friends, make new professional um, contacts as well in the first place. And of course, a top university, best place for learning. And that leads to the second, the third point, rather, that you get to learn world best practices in dealing with the issue in your area of interest. For instance, if you're dealing with climate change, you get to hear top research, work with top professors and see the different initiatives being taken to tackle climate change. So yeah, I'm going to be in one of the best hands in the world. And this is like one of the opportunities you've always dreamt of. Of course, networking. So networking with other scholars, with alumni, with the students and faculty at Edinburgh. So networking most times is good when you want to like undertake projects, you know, or for future collab, present and future collaboration for mutual learning, knowledge transfer, lesson drawing. So this is also an opportunity to network, to do all these things. Let's go to the fourth one. We'd like to find out more about your interest in further academic study. Please explain how the degree program you have chosen to study here relates to your future goals. What specifically about this course will be useful to you? If choosing an online degree program, please reflect on how you would manage your part-time study with other commitments. Of course, you choose one of the programs on the eligibility list and then show how this program relates to your past study and profession. One good way to go about this is to go to the program page and see the program description and see exactly what you'll be learning and paraphrase them in your own words. In your own words. Do not just copy and paste, of course. You paraphrase in your own words and say this course will furnish me with these skills, with that skills, will expose me to this theory, to that theory, would facilitate this particular discussion, facilitate that particular discussion. Um, 
Of course, all of them gathered from the course website. So skills you intend to learn, quite related to what I just said, what you, um, first, what, how it relates to your background. Like, oh, you've done something like this in the past. Now you want to like amplify your contribution um, to that area. For instance, you did like gender studies in the past and now you're coming to like amplify, increase your knowledge, so to say, get more um, facts about contemporary issues in gender studies. And of course, the skills you will learn are these things we talked about, the new um, innovative world-class skills you get from Edinburgh. And how will these skills help your future? So for your future, you could say you intend to maybe become a manager in a particular NGO or start your own school or take up a political position. And these skills that you learn from Edinburgh, list the skills, will put you in a higher pedestal or will serve as stepping stones for you towards this, your future goal. Of course, let's go to the fifth and the last one. The MasterCard Foundation is a growing network of diverse scholars. One of the key attributes of this network is a commitment to inclusion. What experience do you have promoting social inclusion? What have you learned? So social inclusion is about, most times it's about um, opening access, widening access to people who are usually marginalized, people not often brought into the conversations, people who are often um, underlooked in the society. So here you could speak about how your past initiative, either in your job, in your school, in one of those leadership um, opportunities you talked about, how they brought access to marginalized people like the poor, like um, underrepresented women, refugees, orphans, ethnic minorities. So look for ways how your past initiatives actually helped people, the underserved people in these categories. Then what did you learn? You can say you learned the evil of discrimination and inequality, that this dehumanizes people, that human beings are the same um, and have the same rights and should enjoy the same privileges. But inequality discrimination robs a certain group of people of their rights, of their privileges, and of the, of the necessity to enjoy the good things of life. So what have you also learned? You could talk about how the community is better off if everyone is carried along. That if everyone puts their hands together to solve a particular problem, of course, things are solved easier. And that is why you need all hands on deck, regardless of religion, class, gender, you know, migration status. You could also talk about how unity, um, um, unity in diversity, that we are all from different, we have different inclinations, we have different goals, but then we can bring these goals together to help the growth of society. And that is why we have to include as many people as possible, because only one person cannot bring this beautiful unity in diversity. So these are some of the talking points you could use. Of course, these are just examples to inspire your own thoughts, you know, to water the ground for you. And of course, filling with your own peculiar, unique, beautiful experiences and exposure that you've gathered over the years. So I hope this was useful. Let's go back to the Edinburgh website. There are lots of information here you can get on the website. So take advantage of this. It's fully funded. And I hope that this time next year, I'll probably pay you a visit in Edinburgh with you studying either the African and international development, the food security, sustainable energy systems, entrepreneurship or innovation, data inequality and society, or even the online courses. You can even take the online courses if um, that's uh, that's if this does it for you. If these uh, online courses actually what you're after, please go for it. This is a beautiful opportunity, guys, and I hope at least <laughs> at least as many as possible actually from this channel gets it. As well. By the way, I think we have two people who got it last time. So I'm happy to announce that this is also a MasterCard, like a small MasterCard community as well in this YouTube channel. And that's it, guys. As usual, we cannot wait to celebrate you. So start getting to work, start putting your documents together. And I will see you at the top sooner than later. Bye bye for now.